back home amongst so many faces that I remember that you didn't tell on me when I wasn't where I was supposed to be. It's good to be home, amen? Uh, I thank my family uh, for being here, my mom and dad and my sister and uh, my wife. Uh, I'm thankful for a wife. 25 years, amen? Uh, by God's grace, I can tell you that God's got this great big reward for her for staying with me for 25 years and putting up with me. Uh, but uh, we're not here to talk about me. Uh, we're here to talk about our Lord and Savior. And so if, if you don't mind, I like to get right at it. Because uh, I got a little excited because Pastor Gaines said, you know, we got to go get our generation. Once you said you got to go get the generation, you got me fired up. That's our calling is to go get this generation. And what, what's happening in the, the world now, so many people are talking about millennials that I don't know how to connect to a millennial. I don't know how to connect to a, a, a Gen X. Can I tell you it's the same way that they did back in the Bible? By just talking to them. People want to know you care before they care how much you know. And sometimes I think we just want to go in and tell them what they're not, as opposed to telling what they could be in Jesus. We get to the point of just looking at the exterior, forgetting that they were made in the image of our Lord and Savior. Imago Dei. And because of that reason, they have value. And part of our job is to help them see that value. And too many times the church has done a very bad job of helping them recognize their value. And so what is great about your theme, Ephesians 3, 20 and 21, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever amen as I pondered that that theme uh, God was doing a work in me to where I could see where manna was getting ready to go you are going to a place where you're asking God to do some amazing things in and through you, even though you know you're flawed. You, 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 know, you know you can't do it by yourself. And so therefore, you want to be able to give him glory for what happens right here. And so as I started praying through that and asking God, God, where can I encourage them? Where would you land me? Uh, God took me to the Macedonian call. Uh, and so we're going to be in the book of Acts. So if you have your Bibles, uh, please turn to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. I'm going to start in verse 6. Acts chapter 16. And I have the ESV version, so it may read a little different than your version, but it's all the same. Amen? Amen. You may have New King James, you may have King James, but I have the ESV today. Amen. amen. So if you have it, say amen. amen. If you don't, say hold up. I'll wait on you. Are we all there? Amen. The word of God reads as thus, and they went through the region of Phygera and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. And when they had come to Mysia, they attempted into 
Bethania, but the spirit of Jesus didn't allow them. So passing by Mysia, they went down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there urging him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we come before you, God, just thanking you. God, thanking you for all that you're doing here at Manna. Thanking you for this great week of Vacation Bible School. Uh, all those that labor with young people. Uh, God, they are the church of today, not the future. Uh, as soon as you call them into your beloved, they have a place of service. And so, God, encourage us with your word today. Help us to see you for who you are and help us to see our need for you. Uh, God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer in whom I trust. We ask you all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, one of the, the, the best things about the book of Acts, uh, some people call it the Acts of the Holy Spirit because he's very dominant in this book. Uh, over 50 times in this book, you will have some type of reference to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit was the one that called Paul, Paul and Barnabas to missions. He called them out of the congregation and says, I'm going to set you apart for missions. Not only did he call them out, he also sent them. And so the Spirit was already working in Paul's life as he was starting to grow in his faith. He was called out from amongst the rest of the congregation to go serve. And one of the things that you see the Holy Spirit in these few verses that we just read, the Holy Spirit told him no. How many people in the room like to hear no? You know, one of that, no is one of those words that you, you really get irritated. Thank you. Help a brother out. Help a brother out. You get real irritated when somebody tells you no. But think about this. Paul was doing his strategic planning for his second missionary trip. He had it all. It was all mapped out. Reverend Larry, it was there. He was going down to Park Heights and Belvedere. He was going to hang a left, and he was going to start preaching the gospel, and the Spirit said no. Then he said, okay, I don't want to go there. I'll go up. I'll go up to Bithynia. And the Spirit of God said, the Bible says the Spirit of Jesus. One says the Holy Spirit. Next time it says the Spirit of Jesus. He says, no. And in my mind, I got to start thinking, as I plan out a year for ministry, when things don't work out the way I say, and somebody comes to me and say, Brother, we don't have that in the budget. I'm like, I wrote it in. Where, where did you miss it? This was part of the plan. But we got to remember that God has a plan that supersedes man's plans that should cause us to humble ourselves to understand that not everything we desire is going to be best for that situation. A lot of times in church, we get to that point where we start looking at whose plan it was, who developed it, where was the source, as opposed to, is it going to reach somebody that doesn't know Christ? We get to the point where we're starting to want to, to wanna take man's opinion over the word of God. Understanding that for Paul, for him to live was Christ and to die was gain. That was his whole purpose in life, was to make Jesus known. And why, why was that Paul's greatest mission? Because Paul understood the love of Christ. He even said that in 2 Corinthians 
for the love of Christ controls us. Because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, and therefore all have died. And he died for all that those who live, listen to this, might no longer live for themselves, but for him for who he died and was raised. And so once we become members of the body of Christ, we no longer live for ourselves. So it's no longer our preference. It's all about him and all about his glory. Too many times we wait to see who's going to get the praise for the program. As opposed to seeing if Jesus is going to work. We want to look at who the person is instead of who the king is. I think part of our problem is we got to go back to what the Bible says. And for Paul, in these few verses, you'll see he had a divine call. Not only did he have a divine call, he had a divine compass as well as a divine compassion. So these are the three things we're going to unpack. Uh, a divine call, a divine compass, and a divine compassion. If you look at this, these verses very carefully, and you understand that the Spirit of God is, very, uh, is moving a lot in the book of Acts, and you understand that Paul was on mission to be about his father's business so that when he had this Macedonian call, he wasn't in his feelings. The minute you hear no from somebody, you immediately get defensive as to why, why are you telling me no? I thought it was a good idea. Pastor Gaines said it was a good idea. He signed off on it. He said we should go. But there's somebody a little bit higher than him. There's somebody a little bit higher that has a little bit more information. And that's called the Spirit of God. And as he starts moving, one of the things I love about experiencing God, Blackaby's book, he says, find out where God is moving and move into that direction. Too many times we want to chart our own path. We want to go the direction we want to go as opposed to find out where the Spirit of God is moving. That's, that's what Paul was doing here when God told him, no, no, I haven't cultivated that area yet. You're going to go there, but not yet. You know, that's the struggle that we live in. Uh, we haven't received all that we're going to get. We still have to live out in these temples that break down. But positionally, we got all that we need. Positionally, it's beautiful. It's, it's a beautiful thing. But now, practically... How are you living in light of not getting what you want? A lot of times in life, God tells us no to see what's in our heart. To expose some things that need to get pulled out. And too many times as believers, we cover it up. We come to church, put our church faces on. Say, hey, brother, sister. Hey, sister. How you doing? God is good all the time. But on the inside, you and God are wrestling because he didn't give you what you asked for. And the difference between Paul, Paul was all about Christ. So if Christ told him no, he said it was for my good. Therefore, I'm going to move where he tells me and when he tells me, not when I want to go. You know, when, when, when you have a divine calling, sometimes you're on this island. 
and even your best friends. Ask Job. They come around you and tell you, 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 you just did it. Whatever you did, you, you just did it. And instead of encouraging you in the Lord that he has purpose for your pain, they start telling you about all that you did and the reason why you're in this position. And, and you got to start looking at where is their wisdom coming from? Is it rooted in the word of God or is it in flesh? Because our flesh tells us to avoid pain at all costs. And can I tell you, I don't like pain. My wife will tell you, if I get hurt, you better call everybody. Because I am not the best patient. I will sit there and be like, my, my pinky toe, it, it's just killing me. I can't move. Can you go get me a sandwich? That's why I told you, she's going to get a crown. Because the least little thing happened to me, I won't get out of bed. But the reality is, pain has a purpose. And too many times as believers, we don't believe that pain has a purpose. We look to find out where's that source of pain coming from and getting rid of it. Sometimes, as an athlete, we're taught to run into the pain. At one time, I was an athlete. At one time, I could do some things. I tell anybody, I'll play you to a game of two. I get the ball first. And it's make it, take it. I set the rules. The older you get, you can start setting the rules. I remember when I was younger, uh, the deacons around here, like Deacon Worley, Deacon Davis, they would take us out back and try to play games, and they set the rules. And they would always win. It's good when you get on the other side and you can understand how to set the game up so that you can win. Because all a young person wants to do is to be engaged. They want to be valued. And too many times, we just walk down the street and look at them. Let's, let's, let's be honest. Our sisters clutch your purse. And our brothers look at him and let, look at him, pull them pants up. I wish somebody would tell him to pull them pants up. It, the reality is, you can't get close enough to him because you already judged him. And they can feel the judgment coming out of you. The minute they walk into church, I can have, not everybody has a suit. Not everybody has clean shoes. But the last time I checked, this is where you're supposed to come to get healing. You can't get the truth out in the street. So if there is blocks at the door, how can they hear the truth? How can a transformation happen in their life? If we are guarding the door so tightly that they can't get in. Sometimes you got to let them in so that you can walk in their mess with them. Because if you haven't known it, ministry is messy. It, you got to get down in it. And then you got to find out where the gospel intersects their mess. Where is that pain point that's causing them to behave the way that they are? And then you could tell them about Jesus, how he died for them. The Bible says he that knew no sin became sin for you and I. So you didn't have to clean yourself up. Too many times people say, well, let me go get clean. No, 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 no. Let the water of the word wash you. As opposed to the regular water that you get out of it and you're still dirty. You still have the weight of the guilt of your sins so that you can move forward. Romans chapter 5 tells us for while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for you and I. The Bible says ungodly. 
That's everybody in this room. At one time or another, you lived an ungodly life. I don't care if you were raised in the church from infancy. At one time or another, you were ungodly. The Bible called you an enemy of God. But then the Bible also says that God was full of grace and mercy. It pleased him to open up your heart so that you could come to a saving knowledge of his son. Too many times we, we forget those things because we've been walking with the Lord for so long that we forget that the verse that used to catch me all the time right there, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God, lest anyone should boast. That was the verse that would catch me all the time. For by grace, it ain't nothing I did that God saved me. It was all about his grace. Through faith in the finished work of his son, the Lord Jesus, who lived a perfect life, took our sins on the cross, was buried, verifiably dead. There are people that will try to tell you that he didn't die. But three days later, he got up. He got up with all power. That is the way anybody gets saved, is believing the gospel. There is no other way but through Jesus. Jesus. And his finished work on the cross. And what happens is when we get into these problems in life, we forget about our divine calling. Because in that passage, if you see, it says in verse 9, it says, And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there, urging him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. There are people standing around calling for the church to come over and help us. But what happens is too many times we get comfortable in our huddles. And we get upset that so-and-so's plan was what we were going to do. And because that plan didn't happen, I'm taking my ball and going home. (laughs) Instead of understanding that God's at work and the providence of God trumps any desires that we have. He's got a perspective that none of us have. You know, how many of you got GPSs? Me and my GPS have a fight all the time. Have you ever put an address in your GPS and it's taking me around Red Robin Hood's barn. And I get to looking at that GPS, and I'm like, I'm not going that way. That's the long way. You know, the married folk in the house, you got a wife in the car that sits shotgun, that want to look at you and say, the GPS said go this way. And I said, my spirit told me to go that way. And so I'm following the spirit, not GPS. And you know, every time you follow your own, you end in this big traffic jam that your wife just sitting there smiling in the car. Not saying it. After 25 years, they don't say anything anymore. In the first few years, it's like, how's that working for you? And I got to look at you and be like, I love you, baby. As Christ loved the church, I'm going to love you. But too many times when the, when the GPS takes us out of our comfort zone, around places where we don't want to go, it's a freer ride. You get there a lot sooner. Sometimes the spirit acts as your GPS and wants to take you around some things. And instead of going the way the the Spirit's telling us, we want to act like we know better. You know what's best about the GPS? Because they sit so high. 
They see everything. 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 You, you, they can't get it wrong. It took me a minute to really understand that GPS has a better perspective than I. Because I'm down here at ground level. But can I tell you there's a king that sits so high that has such a better perspective? And he loves us so much that he's willing to direct us around potholes, around traffic jams, around pain. But too many times we're, we don't want to listen. Instead of following the divine compass to take you to where people have already been prepared to receive your message. They're waiting. All they need is a messenger. And that's what Paul's perspective was. I am his messenger. My life no longer belongs to me. So wherever he tells me to go, I'll go. And until we as believers develop that philosophy, there's still going to be a lot of lostness out there. A lot of things that we have the truth to deal with, we got to break out of these huddles. And we got to go where God's called us to go. Because he's already prepared them. Because if you look at that verse, it says it was a man of Macedonia. That's an area. That's real specific. And then he says, this man was urging. The Bible says it was pleading with you to come. So that means when he's asking them to come, there was a problem over there. And he understood that they had the answer to the problem. Too many times we got the answer to the world's problem. But can I, can I get real, real? We want to sit around and get in our committees and talk about the problem instead of go get in the game. I think it's game on. I think that was the theme. There's a game going on that we got the answer. And when I played ball, I never liked to sit on the bench. I wanted to get in the game. And in order to get in the game, you had to prepare for the week. OK, you've prepared for a lifetime now. Now it's time to get in the game. You can have but so many Bible studies. Now you got to go do. Too many times we just listen to the word and it feels so good. I don't know about you, but I want to get in the game. I want to get some. I want to get a piece. And then once you get in the game, you start really loving the game plan. And you understand that Jesus, in his sovereignty, lets you intersect a hurting person to release them of their pain with the truth of the gospel, that they no longer have to carry those burdens. It was pain. All sins, past, present, and future. Because none of us are perfect. We still live in these bodies. So sin still, it ain't raining. I ain't going to say it rains. It ain't rains. It's still around us. It, it was broke loose on Calvary. Romans chapter 6 says, I no longer have to sin. I choose to sin. He broke that bond. I just have to walk in the freedom that is in Christ Jesus. Too many times we continue to let our past prevent us from being who God's called us to be today. Too many times we just continue to carry around that weight. 
instead of shredding those and allowing the freedom. There are people that are calling the church. They're saying we're hurting. We need you. We need you to come minister to us. And all the time we remember the Great Commission. The Bible says all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. That's Jesus. He says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Have you understood? Have you gone to Walmart lately? How many different languages do you hear? There's a bunch of nations. There's a bunch of nations in a Walmart. At one time, he wanted them to leave. But the command in the Great Commission is to make disciples. The, the go is as you are going, literally, as you are going. Everybody go to Walmart. Everybody go to Walmart. As you are going to Walmart, instead of being mad about why the lines are so long, thank God for the opportunity. You know, I'm preaching to myself. Too many times I get in the Walmart line and say, Lord, can't they hire some more people? Don't they know I got some place to be? But all along, there's an opportunity. I turn around and look at my wife to fuss. She back there talking to somebody. I'm like, where did you know her from? I don't know. We was in the line. That's what believers are supposed to do. You're called to be light and salt in a dark world. And if you're in a line that's a long line, just think, could be an opportunity. Could be a reason why Christ placed you right there. It could be a reason to bless somebody. Have you ever been in a line and somebody's car didn't go through? And you scratching your head, be like, girl, you know you didn't have the money. Why are you ringing this? But the Spirit of God saying, you buy her pampers. The gospel's in action. Now all of a sudden you got her attention because you bought some pampers. Now all of a sudden you got an opportunity to tell why you bought those pampers. Because your sins were bought on Calvary by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So as I receive, I'm giving to you. I think too many times we get in a hurry. If you look at Jesus in the gospel, he was never in a hurry. He was never late. He got there right on time. Too many times we're, we're, we're in that point where I got to get there. That's my life. I hate to be late. What will get underneath my skin and grind my, if I'm late, I'm all messed up before I even get there. That's just been my pet peeve all my life. And sometimes God puts those closest to you to help you work through some things. How you can sit in your car and just wait on somebody and just be singing praises to the Lord. Lord, there's a reason why we're going to be late today. I'm going to give you praise right now. No, that ain't how it go. And he says, baptizing all nations in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them. Uh-oh. Teaching them to observe all that I commanded. I think we forget, as making disciples, part of our job is to teach. They're not going to know. And, and if you want to really understand a millennial, understand they've been watching for years. And they've seen the church and the things that happened in the church and they decided, I don't want it no more. Mom and dad can't stay together. Divorce rates among believers just as high as the world. Last time I checked, as a believer, you got the spirit of God living in you. And two believers can't work it out? They starting to say, something's funny. Something ain't right. Something ain't right. 
And in their choosing, instead of getting married, why don't we just live together? And you know, that's a big thing for the church. We're like, no, you can't do that. Instead of teaching them why they can't do that. You, you, you got to open up the book. Let the Holy Spirit convict them. Instead of getting behavior modification that I stopped because you said, you get spiritual transformation because the word of God said. But just like in making a cake, you got to put all the ingredients in there. And you got to stir it up real good. And you got to put it in an oven. And then you got to wait. You know, I love my cakes. I'm going to say, I'm gonna say uh, chocolate cake with white icing. Uh, chocolate cake with white icing. If you want to minister to me, that'll get my spirit going, boy. And I get impatient sometimes when the cake's in the oven. How many of you know you keep opening the Nope, not ready yet. You got to pull it back out. And then all of a sudden, you done went and done something, you forgot about the cake, and it came back and it's done. That's kind of how the word of God works in people's lives. You got to deliver it. Trust that somebody else was going to come and water it. Because God works everything out. You're not the only person ministering to that person. He's got another person that's going to come water what you planted. But God's the only one that can bring the increase. I don't get to choose when it comes. And so when people come with all these different issues, think back. You had some issues. If you still got them, why are you beating them out? Just because it's not your issue. I think too many times we get, that, we get hung up. But we've got to remember what Paul, what Paul said. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone who believes. First to the Jew. Then to the Gentiles you got to believe that there's power in the gospel. Yes. That will help you to have that divine compassion to share the truth. Because he said in, in this passage, verse 10, And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately he sought to go into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. The Bible says immediately. Didn't, Paul didn't need a whole committee to tell him this is where we needed to go. Paul led that group and said, I heard from the Lord. We're going to Macedonia. But that means we got to go around Asia. Yeah, we're going around Asia and we're going to Macedonia. Because they're ready to receive the word of God. My question to each one of us. As disciples of Jesus, who has God called you to minister to? Who has God called you to have a burden for? Because if you're going to get in the game, you got to recognize the call that God's placed on your life. And that call is to make disciples. If you're not making disciples, you're not in the game. That commandment wasn't just to the 11. It's to every believer. And if every believer shared what you know, do you understand our world would look different? Do you understand our crime rate would look different? But too many times what happens is fear grips us and we say, I don't know enough. What I say to that is study more. You do what you love. 
When I was younger, you didn't have to tell me to go play basketball. I did it. Didn't, didn't have to tell me to run the street. I loved it. You didn't tell me not, not to go to the uh, gambling spots. I get a little piece of money. I'm going to double down on it. You ain't had to tell me that. I did what I loved. As believers, we should love the word of God. And we should be eating from the word of God daily. You can't live out what you don't know. There's a lot of things in that book that will prevent you from stumbling. Too many times we get ourselves in situations, and I'm famous for it. God, how do I get here? I ran through a lot of red lights. Had I been in the word, the spirit would have convicted, and I would have hit the brakes. But because I wasn't in the word, I was living in the world, my mentality became as the world. But understanding that if we're going to be who God's called us to be and have the compassion that God's had for each one of us, we can't be fearful of opening our mouths. We've got to be able to tell this generation of where God has brought you from. The giant you are today wasn't who you were 20 years ago. But if it wasn't for the grace of God on your side, I don't know where I would be. And too many times they just see us and they're like, I can't get there. I'm like, Yes, you can. Because if God could do it for me, he could do it for you. You don't know my whole story. And be able to tell them your narrative and show them how the gospel intersected your life and how it sent you on a different trajectory. If they don't hear it from us, where are they going to get it from? And so you understand, 50 years ago, Preacher Brown had a divine calling to move from Philadelphia down to Baltimore. You know, that's a big move. With not knowing anybody or where he was going to minister. He went to Grace. And had a couple little stops and a couple hiccups. But God had a providential plan for him to drive past this church one day in Arlington, was out front, to have a meeting with Reverend Bissett. Wow. Reverend Bissett was like, okay, this is going to be great. We're moving. You're looking for a place. But the reality is, had he not stopped, yeah. manna could be someplace else. Part of our lives is being willing to stop and see the opportunities before you instead of driving by. Man, am I charged to you? Have you stopped and seen what God is doing around you? Have you checked with his divine compass? to move with him? And have you asked him to give you that divine compassion so that your mouth would open? Because trust me, God's put people in your life that's already prepared, that's already ready to receive the gospel. They just need you to open your mouth. It could be on the job. I always say, Think about that person on the job that annoys you the most. There are some appointments that you can't get rid of. And when God is setting you up, you need to pray. 
that he would give you the strength uh -huh. and the boldness to share the love of Christ. We read earlier, Romans chapter 12, don't do evil to those that hate you. Try loving on some people and watch God do the rest. The charge for you in these next few years, get in the game. Be active. I've sat here and heard all that God's doing here. If you're not a part, you're missing it. God's put you here, and your gifts are here. If you're in the body of Christ, you have a gift. That gift needs to be exercised so that God can be glorified. If you're sitting on the sidelines, my challenge to you, get in the game. If you're in the game, my challenge to you is keep pushing on. Press on. And if you're here by chance and you don't know Christ, I said a lot. Um, but the biggest thing that I can tell you is that he loved you so much that he sent his son to die for you. He sent his son to take on your sin so that you don't have to carry them any longer. Today is the day of salvation. All heads and eyes closed, if you would bow with me. Father in heaven, we thank you for uh, your word. God, we thank you for the Apostle Paul, who understood that his life was not his own, that you had greater plans for him. And that your divine compass leads us to where people are that need to hear from us about the truth of who you are and who we are without you. And so, Father, I pray for that one today that may not know you uh, and the pardon of their sins. They may be rustling. Uh, God, I pray that you would uh, move in their hearts, that they would believe your gospel and the truth of your son. And then set them free uh, to serve faithfully in this body called Man of Bible. Uh, God, this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.